Hello, shalom. Welcome again to What Up with Gloria. I hope everybody is well and I hope everybody is keeping safe. Amen and amen. And I want to welcome those people who are here for the very first time. You're very welcome. And to those who are returning, you know that you are always welcome. Amen and amen. Yes. Um, today I want to talk about the storm that topped all storms. Okay. Uh, a couple of months ago, I think we talked about the storms that come into our lives and we heard that not every storm comes to destroy. We talked about a few things that the storm can accomplish in your lives. If you would like to watch that video, it's a thing two months ago. Today, we're not talking about what the storm does per se. We are talking about the reaction, our reaction to the storms. We're going to talk about the storms that happened to the disciples many years ago, obviously. And that particular story is in the book of Matthew. Uh, and it tells us that there was a time that Jesus was with his disciples. And after he finished talking to the crowds, I think he had been talking to the crowds. And after he sent the crowds away, and then he put his disciples into a boat and he made them go to the other side. And I want to read that very quickly. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Okay. So we hear that Jesus is praying all by himself, but the disciples are in a boat in the middle of the sea and a big, huge storm and winds have risen up and they are buffeting this boat. Okay. But the Bible says that Jesus continues to pray. Now, it is very clear that Jesus knew what was happening at sea. Jesus knew there was a storm. In fact, I believe that Jesus had put his disciples into that boat so that he, they, they, he was testing their faith. He puts them in a boat and they are far away in the middle of the sea without Jesus all by themselves. Okay, so the number one thing we can establish here is that Jesus knew they were in trouble. Jesus knew there was a storm. Obviously, probably the storm was wherever he was, there were winds. So he knew they were in some kind of trouble. Amen. Jesus himself put them in the boat. Listen, when you are going through stuff, okay, when you're going through stuff and you're fighting storms and tempests and troubles and tribulations and challenges and difficulties, there's always that feeling that God is somehow is not with you and he has forgotten you and he's left you alone to fight for your own life and you are crying out and he's not listening. These guys were fighting the storm and I'm sure they were wondering where is Jesus at this time when we are perishing? And the Bible says that Jesus continues to pray. Okay. Jesus continues to pray until three o'clock in the morning. By three o'clock in the morning, the Bible says that Jesus decides to go to the disciples. Well, he goes to the disciples. He does not get on a boat. <laughs> the Bible tells us that Jesus walks on water. Now, there are a few things that I would like to point out in this story. Number one, Jesus will not always come when you expect him to come. At the point at which you think, okay, I can't take this anymore. And God, you have abandoned me. You have left me. He's not necessarily going to come at that time. Jesus knows the point at which to come. Jesus knows the point at which to intervene. And the reason is, if he keeps coming out any time something little starts to happen, every time something happens in your life, you will never grow any faith. You will never learn how to stand in your own faith. You will never learn how to deal with the situations by yourself using faith. And so he leaves them alone. But at some point he comes to them. So a key point here is to know that Jesus knows the point at which you can no longer take it anymore. He knows there's a point that you, you've done all the best that you can. And now he needs to come in and intervene. 
That's point number one. Point number two is that Jesus will not come the way you expect him to come. I'm sure these people were looking out for a boat because they expected Jesus. If Jesus is going to come, he's going to take a boat and he's going to come here. They've probably sent out an SOS. They've probably shouted and screamed. And so they're expecting that Jesus will come in a rescue boat and rescue them out of their perishing boat. But Jesus did not come out on a boat. In fact, Jesus decides to come in a way that they have never seen before. He's walking on water. Okay? He comes to them walking on water. And the Bible says that when the disciples look out and they see Jesus on water, they see this form of a person, they said it must be a ghost. Another key point to notice is that sometimes when we are struggling, when we begin to struggle in life, instead of expecting that we're in that situation because God has put us there, we always tend to see the hand of the enemy. How come they thought it was a ghost? Why did they not think it was an angel? Why a ghost? Why not an angel? Why not Jesus? They knew Jesus was the son of God. How comes they didn't see Jesus? They've spent all these years with Jesus. Well, the, men, the few years, they, they were enough for them to know him. Let me tell you this. When you have spent enough time with a person, you know how they walk. When you see them coming from afar, you may not be able to see their face. You cannot see their features, but you know their form. You know how tall they stand. You know how they walk. You are able to recognize somebody from their walking style and their gait. So they see Jesus is coming, but they don't recognize his walking style. They don't recognize the way he walks, the way he stands, the way he does a thing. You know, when fear, when you allow fear to fill your heart because of what you're going through, you never ever see God. Every time you look around you, you see the devil. It's the devil this and it's the, the devil that and the devil is attacking me and the devil is doing this and the devil is doing that. And it's not always the devil. Amen. So Jesus comes to them and Another point to note is that you would expect Jesus from afar to steal the wind, to command the wind to stop. Because while he's still coming to them, the wind is still blowing, they're still being buffeted, and they're still crying out. But he doesn't command the wind to go. The Bible says that Jesus gets into the boat with them. When you are in a situation that has, you know, you feel like the fire has been turned up by so many degrees and you feel like you cannot handle it anymore. Let me tell you something. Jesus is already come in. There are times when you are crying and Jesus has already come in and he's right there with you. Jesus will not only perform a miracle in your life, but he comes in to be with you even at the hour of need. Jesus stepped into their boat. To show them that it's okay, I'm here and I'm in the boat with you. And as soon as Jesus entered the boat, the seas, the storms calmed, the seas calmed, the wind stopped, and everything was okay. Amen. So, Jesus is not always going to come when you think he should come. He will come at the appointed time. He will come at the point when he knows is the right time to intervene. Jesus will not come in the way you expect him to come. Jesus will come in a way that you've probably never seen. <laughs> and if you're not ready for Jesus to come in a way that you've never seen, then you better not pray. Bible says, I has not seen, neither ear heard, neither has it entered the minds of men, the things that God has prepared. Sometimes God will do something that will blow your mind, a spectacular fashion that will even have you thinking that that cannot be God. It's not everything that looks different and strange is the devil. We need to change that mentality. Just because something has never happened before, you've never seen it, you've never witnessed it, doesn't mean it's Satan. Sometimes it's just God. 
God can come in whichever way he wants to come because he is God. He created the earth, the seas, the mountains, the waters, everything we see in the world is his. And whichever way he chooses to come, if he chooses to ride the clouds, if he chooses to come walking on water, if he chooses to fly in the air, if he chooses to come crawling, I mean, God will come whichever way he wants to come. Amen. And finally, <laughs> God will come and he will get into that situation with you. He is able to calm the seas and the raging storms from within because he loves you and he wants to show you that he is in, in it with you. Jesus is in this thing with you. Amen. So when you find yourself far away somewhere alone and you feel like you have been abandoned and neglected and forgotten, Remember that maybe Jesus put you out there because he's testing your faith. But there'll come a point when he knows that you've done the best that you come and he will come out and send and bring you help when you need it. Amen and amen. So God bless you. Whatever storm you're going through today, may God make his way to you. I want to encourage you and let you know that maybe you've been fighting and maybe you have very little strength left to wait now. The waves have just about <sighs> taken everything out of you. The storms have just about deflated every little strength and courage and boldness and faith that you had. But help is coming. Keep holding Keep standing, keep waiting, and keep praying because help is coming and Jesus is on his way to you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen.